All right, so it's about time I check in with you guys. I have been really busy. Check it out. The trunk, the trunk lid is done. I had a little spot I had to reprime. I already reprimed it and blocked it. I basically, I blocked out the whole trunk lid and I found a little, just the tiniest little ding that just quite wouldn't block out. So I went ahead and took care of that. Reprimed it, reblocked it. That deck lid is straight. We're good to go there. Uh, the doors, all four doors, check it out. Every one of them completely blocked, ready to go. The Somebody asked me, are we jamming this thing? Are we painting the jams? Yes, we are. I mean, look. I've stripped these jams completely down to bare metal, just like I did the rest of the car. Anything that needed to be treated, got treated with the Eastwood. You can see here where it's black. There were a few spots here and there that did need a little bit of treating. You can see here on the on all the jams, anything, anywhere where there was even the slightest bit of surface rust left behind after all of the sanding and the grinding, I did treat with that Eastwood stuff. Uh, jury's still out on the Eastwood. I don't know. I mean, I've never used it before. They say it's good. I guess time will tell. We'll find out. Uh, I'm over here doing the uh, hood now. This hood turned out to be quite a project all by itself. Very, very time consuming on this hood. In fact, I probably got three days on the hood alone. But check it out, man. Would you guys look at this? Look how smooth this thing is turning out very very nice uh didn't have a whole lot of body work to do on the uh on the hood but there was a spot right here in the center where it looked like someone had probably closed it down on a uh, screwdriver a wrench i don't know closed it down on that on top of the uh the air breather and it left a Pretty good little spot there that had to get fixed, but as you can see, I mean, can you can you tell that anything was there? So I have people ask me all the time, you know, which is better, wet sanding or dry sanding? And in my opinion, it's, it's just a matter of preference. I do prefer wet sanding when possible because it does keep the dust down. I'm in kind of a, a little area here. Dust can be a problem. And this definitely will keep the dust down for sure. So I kind of got to thinking about it. Uh, since we're going to be spraying all of this all at once. I mean, we're doing the whole car all at once. Two-tone, the whole nine yards. It's all getting done at once. That is going to create a ton of overspray. And up till now, you know, we've been dealing with the overspray by just kind of cracking the door open and letting a fan just kind of carry it out the door. And that's gotten us by so far, but man, it kind of sucks, really. So I thought it was time for a window. There we go, check it out. Finished cutting that out. I got a big old window, man. It's like five feet tall. It's a pretty good size window. Look at that thing. <laughs> man, check it out, you guys. There it is. We got her in. She screwed in the hole. Now I'm gonna have to go through and and fill in two by fours through there to kind of go around it, obviously. Haven't done that yet, I will though. But for now, I gotta get back to painting. I just needed that in there. Uh, here we go, man. I gotta get this car out of here. I've already cleared out the other side of the shop and we've got some cleaning to do, man. I mean, you see all the leaves and the dirt and everything and not to mention the car itself is filthy. It's got dust all over it. So we're gonna get it out blow everything out blow the shop out give some time for the dust to settle just a little bit and then we'll roll everything back in and we will start wiping everything down and start the masking process
So that little contraption's working out pretty good. I uh, made that just to kind of hang the doors up to get them out of the floor and keep me from having to lean the doors up against anything or up against themselves or anything like that. Now that they're completely blocked, I don't want anything to happen to them. So I just kind of hung them up there to get them out of the way. I got plenty of nice thick newspaper, like several layers in between here so they don't bump into each other or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, this is what I've got going, going on over here. Check it out. Uh, when I worked in the paint and body shop, we had what was known as Christmas tree stands, and this is what they were. Uh, of course, theirs were a lot fancier. They had wheels on them. You roll them around. This is just something I grabbed out of the scrap pile and just kind of welded it all together, just a bunch of old metal. And uh, this is the way it works. Uh, in the body shop, the, it would have some you know wing nuts and whatnot so that you can adjust and move these up and down the pole, in and out, any which configuration you could possibly imagine you could accomplish with those stands. But they're pricey, you know, and I need two of them. I need one for two, two doors. We have four doors here, so I need one for uh, each pair of doors. Uh, we're talking, you know, get 300 bucks or more. We're not spending that. Obviously, we don't do that here. So, you know, for the price of some welding gas and some welding wire and just some old scrap I have laying around in the yard, here we go, man. We got ourselves a Christmas tree stand. It's really freaking cool because you could get in here and you could do anything that you need to do on both sides of the door. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that door and we're going to stick it right here on this side, just opposite so it's nice and balanced and all that good stuff. And uh, <laughs> it shouldn't go anywhere. We should have plenty of room in between the two panels. I could get in there and spray everything I need to do. This should work out great. I got another one over here on standby for the other two doors. We're gonna do it the same exact way. This ought to work out nice. Now, obviously I wish they had wheels on them and I guess we could get carried away and do all of that, but we're not going to. This is gonna be kind of a one-time deal as far as this goes. Who knows how long it might be before I need it. To do this again and if i do i'll do it the same way i'll just get in and tag it all together and we'll be good to go Okay, there you go. One completed Christmas tree stand. That's what we used to call them anyway. Uh, I think that's gonna get it. I think it's gonna work. I think they're just up high enough off the ground. I should be able to, I should be able to work all the way around it with no interference from anything, you know? One door shouldn't interfere with the other. All of my little rods and whatnot are all kinda over out of the way. So we should be able to get inside of here paint inside the jams and out which is good because on this particular car being a two-tone paint job the two-tone actually wraps around inside of the jam it does that on the whole car uh quarter panels everything that um that two-tone is going to actually both is going to go in just inside of here and it stops right in here it doesn't go all the way in but it does come inside here so I don't see any way to do this properly without doing it in a million pieces. So that's why we're spraying all the panels off the car. That way we could get in there, do all the jams, and make it look like it's supposed to. All right, y'all, last door, let's do it.
Boy, look at him shaking. I know, man, that was a rough ride, but that's it. We're done. They're staged. Good to go. This is what I got going on. Just like this, and I'll scoot the hood down here a little bit. Kind of get it away from the uh, trunk lid. I mean, that's way too close. We'd never be able to paint it like that, obviously. So anyway, let's get all this turned around and uh, everything lined up the way we needed to. And we'll start cleaning all of this up and start putting some tape on it. So I came out to the shop this morning. I'm gonna turn the uh, lights on, fire up the old air compressor, and uh, this is all I got. Nothing. Nothing. We're in the dark. I wasn't sure what was going on, so I took the old breaker box part, and there's nothing going on in there. Everything's cool. Nothing caught fire, no sparks or anything. So I went out to the pole, and I'll show you guys what I found out there. Kind of, kind of funny. This is what I found out here. Ants. This thing is just loaded with ants right on the breaker and it's not allowing it to make contact anymore. This is hot all the time right here. This is what comes in from the pole, goes through the meter, comes into here, and then the, from here on is me. From this point on is me. Again, this is the electric company. I know most of you guys know that. So obviously, even though you know I could come in and turn the breaker off, I can't touch any of that stuff. All of that, it stays hot. I would have to have the electric company come out and shut it off. Hopefully I can clean this out without dying. That would be nice. All right, here we go. Hope I turn the valve all the way on, right? And I'll answer all over now. Oh no, they're blowing all over. Oh crap, they're on my arm now. Look at them running out of my breaker, dude. What am I gonna do about this, y'all? I'm gonna have to call the electric company out here and have them shut this thing off. That breaker's gotta come out. I gotta thoroughly clean that. That thing is packed with so many ants. There's no way that's ever gonna work again. This is 80 degrees today. Today was my paint day. What the hell? If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. So I guess we're gonna spend the weekend in the dark and uh, I guess, good thing I put that guy in. That That's perfect. It's got a little bit of light, I guess. All right, now that we're disconnected, let's get down to it. We'll get this pulled off of here. See if we can't figure out what's going on. If we can fix it or if we got to replace it. All right, I've got everything done. Comes out just like that, easy enough. Looks like it's got some screws in here. I could take it apart. I've never done this before, so this ought to be a learning experience. Hopefully it works. I don't have to buy a new breaker because I think that's over a hundred bucks. Hopefully this will come apart pretty easy. There we go. Oh my, look at that. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't even like how that looks. Mm -mm. <laughs> Just sketchy. I might have developed a phobia. I think I'm, <laughs> this is going to be in my dreams tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have very much air pressure because I don't have any electricity to pump up the air compressor. But I did manage to get all the ants blown out of there. I actually took this apart and got the contacts. Got them all cleaned up to where it's not gummed up anymore. I think I could put the cover back on it and we'll call the old boy back out here in just a little bit. He says he's just right down the street from here, so it's not a big deal. He said he'll come back and reconnect the power after I hook this back up and find out if it works or not. There we go. Get that back on there and hopefully this works. All right, so I jumped ahead a little bit and did a little bit of masking off camera. I didn't figure I'd bore you guys too much with all that. We've showed that a million times already on this project. So I just went ahead and knocked it out. And good news, obviously we got the uh, electricity back on. So, awesome. I've already ran a, a nice even coat of sealer on all the parts that I'm actually gonna be putting this white paint on. You can see 
this will be white. Below the trim line will be white. All that's gonna be white on everything and it's gonna go just up inside the jams. Okay, so what we're gonna do on this part is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit it with a white. We're not gonna use any tape at this point. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna let the white paint sit overnight and dry to the touch so that we can come back and actually put tape over it and then that will split our color and create our two-tone effect. So we've got the first coat on and man, it's looking nice. It's looking very nice. You can see where it kind of wraps around into the jam like I was talking about. Uh, now we're set up here to where we can go in and tape off our lower section. But of course, like I mentioned before, we gotta wait till tomorrow to do that. It's gonna have to sit overnight. Obviously, when you put your tape on it, you're gonna, you're gonna mess up your new finish. It's gonna be too sticky. But check it out, man. It's looking really nice. I'm impressed with the way that paint lays down. It lays down very smoothly. I hope you guys can see that. But man, I think that lays down awesome. Now that color is gonna split like right here on this edge where it folds over and the rest is blue. And then up here, obviously with the trim holes and down, I've explained this before I know, but in case you're new, from here down will be white, and then this section up here will be blue. The jams as well, they'll all be blue, with the exception of just this lower portion here. Like I said, it's, it's gonna split like right there. But like I mentioned before, we are gonna have to wait till morning before we could put that tape on to split the two colors. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hammer another coat on. Not really gonna bore you guys with too much of that. I know you guys are ready to see that beautiful blue paint go on, I am too. So, you know, we'll get a few shots of me hammering on another coat and then we'll, we'll come back tomorrow. All right, so brand new day. We're coming out this morning and we're starting our two-tone. That's where we're at now. We're gonna start that beautiful blue paint. But before we do that, we do have to go over a few things. We gotta do a lot of taping, a lot of masking, as you can imagine. So I wanted to show you guys this right here. This is how the colors are gonna be split, just like that. We'll do that all the way down the side. It's just going to wrap just inside of here. And then that's actually a panel sitting on top of another panel. So there's a nice little edge here. And this is basically just going to stay white. Really good spot to split the colors. And that's the way the factory did it. So that's how we're going to do it. And it's just going to run right through here. 
all of this stays white and then all of this inside of here turns blue and we'll do that all the way down the side okay so there's one completed door fully masked ready to go this is set up for the two-tone effect I'm using a 3m tape it's kind of a kind of has a real slick rubbery finish to it and supposedly it's going to create a really fine line 3m makes it this is what the inside of the door will be like uh, right through here you'll see these little holes that's where the weather stripping is going to go so the color actually spit splits right behind the weather stripping so it's cool you won't even see that line Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this guy. I thought if I opened the window, he'd go away, but it didn't work. Well, y'all, I had to tape my brand new window shut. Look at that. That bird was not letting up. That poor guy must have sat out and banged his head up against that window for hours, and I finally was like, I got to do something. I was afraid he's going to hurt himself. So We still get the benefits of the uh, ventilation, but with half the sunlight, I guess, but I guess we'll be all right. Uh, he did go away. I haven't seen him hit the window one time since, so I guess it's working. I guess he uh, was seeing his reflection in the window. I don't know. My wife, she's Native American. She swears that kind of stuff means something. I don't know what I asked her. Well, what does it mean? I don't know. Well, I suggest you brush up on some stuff. I need to know what this is about. Okay, so check it out, man. We got this entire side masked off and ready to go all the way down the side. Obviously, everything that you see covered with paper will stay white and everything else will be blue. So, there's that side done. I'm going to go over and wrap up the driver's side and that's it. All four doors are done. I may have showed you that already. So, we're just about there. Okay, so the driver's side is done now as well. We got everything, y'all. It's all completely masked off. I'm not going to lie. That was a lot of masking. So I've got a lot of cleaning to do. I'm not going to bore you guys with all of that. I've showed you that a million times. It's, it's literally just wipe on and wipe off. We've all heard it before. Wax on, wax off. Well, same thing. And you see what it picks up. And it'll do that just about every time, I swear. Everything is completely wiped down and cleaned. We are mixing sealer. This is the sealer that we're using. Just so everybody knows, in case you're new to the channel, we got this from TCP Global, and it's been great. I mean, I've never sprayed it before. I've never used this stuff ever, and I'm impressed with it. It lays down very, very nicely. So this mix is one-to-one, -one, and basically this is the sealer. This is the catalyst. Without this, this won't dry. And also, you can put a splash of reducer in it as well, which I have right here. And all that does is uh, it just helps it flow out of the gun a little better and uh, kind of helps it lay down with less orange peel. And like I said, just like one splash of that at the end is all it takes. So let's get this mixed up one to one. Obviously, you know, half of this and half of that. And then a little tiny splash of this at the end is all it's going to take on that. So one to one easiest mixing ratio that there is. Don't get much easier than that, right? So we're going to mix this up enough for a whole pot and then we're going to get to spray it. Now what I did is I went up to the number four here with the sealer. And now all I got to do is just go up to the next column and go up to the number four again. This is for all you guys that don't know. I know most of you watching know this kind of stuff, but there are some younger guys that are kind of new to this stuff. Maybe they're on the fence. Maybe they're thinking about doing a project like this and they're just not sure if they want to do it or not. So we like to kind of explain to people what they're getting themselves into in case it's their first try. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with being new at something. In my opinion, it just shows that you have courage to try something without having any prior experience. And that could be, that could be downright scary some of this stuff right so i'm i'm not going to look down on anybody for being a noob if that's what you want to call them so anyway let's go up just to the number four there that ought to be good uh this is i just ran out of the other one that's all this is the exact same thing i just the other one 
we ran out before the mix was complete. That's all that was. So same thing. We didn't switch up on you or anything. Now, what I said before about a splash at the end, they're saying you can use one part of the reducer at the end, but we're not going to quite do that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go one cap full right there at the end. Call it good. We're going to, we're going to mix this up and start spraying it. All right, she's all stirred up. Let's pour it into the pot here. Um, notice I'm straining going into the pot as well. Even though we already strained it into the mixing cup, you can't strain this stuff enough, you guys. All right, let's pop the cap on there with the collar. Twist that up. These are nice. These are made by PPG, and it's just it's a liner with a cap, and they're disposable, which I'm out of, by the way. Anybody wanting to donate, there you go, man. I need some more of those. I don't know if I showed this to you guys before. Let's let's take a second here. Uh, these are pretty cool. They're disposable. They're made by PPG, and this is simply just a liner. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Make this is a liner that just goes right down the side of your cup, and sp you're supposed to throw them away when you're done. Although, fun fact, I've been using this same cup, the liner and the cap through this entire project. Dude, we're getting by on the nitty gritty around here, man. I thought this was kind of interesting. This is why we strain. Look at that. Look how much of that, what? What on earth? That is a lot, look at that, chunks. And that's after shaking it and stirring it for, yeah, 30 minutes at least. So when it comes to tack cloths, I know I've explained this in previous videos, but like I said, we're gonna go over it again in case anybody's new all right when it comes to these right here the yellow ones they're very sticky they're not like the blue ones the blue ones aren't quite as sticky as these uh these here i was always taught to pull them apart i know a lot of y'all probably been leaving them folded up when you're using them i was always told to pull them apart get them all fluffed up you know like so and then you want to just kind of set them somewhere and let them sit for a few minutes, you know, like 15 minutes. And what it does is it just gets some of the stickiness off of it because they are extremely sticky and you don't want to wipe them on the surface and have any of that sticky residue be left behind onto the surface. That would be bad. So just kind of let them sit for a minute somewhere and uh, it'll kind of take care of itself. I apologize for the noise. I had to kick the heater on. It's a little chilly out. That's okay. Um, anyway, we're just going to kind of cruise through here. We're not going to get too crazy, too fast, anything like that. We're going to do our paper even. Yep, that's right. You're going to go through and just kind of run your tack off real lightly. Don't be careful. You know, you don't want to mess up nothing. You want to be careful. Just kind of run over your paper, run over the entire surface from top to bottom, right? And this is the perfect time and probably your last chance to really get in there and check your masking tape and make sure nothing's come undone. You wanna go over all your edges. Make sure that tape is all on there the way it's supposed to be. Definitely don't want any of the sealers or anything to bleed through because something came undone and you missed it. So this is the perfect opportunity. Just kinda of slow down, run through here, and at the same time, make sure everything is still stuck the way it's supposed to be. All right, so the sealer's in the gun. Uh, let's get our first coat on.
So there we are, one full coat of sealer over everything. She's all sealed up, good to go. And at this point, we'll just let all that dry for, I don't know, maybe about 30 minutes or so. And uh, it, it should be ready just to spray paint right over the top of it. We won't have to do any kind of, any more sanding or anything. Uh, one thing we will do, once it's dry to the touch after about a half hour, we will go back with our tack cloth and re-tack it back off. Uh, that is an, an extra line of defense against dust and dirt. And uh, you can do that as long as you let the sealer set up to where it's dry to the touch. We're, looks like we're pushing over 75 degrees in here. Which is good because it's only like 50 outside. So this is working out just fine. And we're going to keep rolling right along with this. I wanted to show you guys something. You guys probably notice I've actually got a paint suit on, gloves, you know, of course, respirator, things like that. You know, I went years without using this stuff and... It's not good. I don't recommend it. You guys probably see some of my earlier videos where I'm not using any of this stuff. And it's just, it's not a good way to go. And I wanted to show you guys something. Um, you would think that overspray would stick to the outside of your glasses. But the weird thing is, for those of you who don't know, it actually sticks to the inside instead, which is very strange. I was always told that the isocyanate, I can't even say isocyanate, something like that. Science, gotta love it. That stuff is actually attracted to the moisture in your eyes. And that's why it fogs the inside of your glasses instead of the outside. So that's pretty weird stuff, you guys. Uh, they tell me stuff like that. I try it my damnedest to protect myself because that's, that's no good, man. I mean, that's weird. Why wouldn't it go on the outside? Why would it skip and go around to the inside? That's some strange stuff. So anyway, just something to think about, you guys. Protect yourself, man. It really is important. All right, y'all. We are finally getting to the good stuff. And I already popped this lid loose. This is the blue. This is what we've all been waiting for. There it is. Ah, oh, man, that looks good. I can't wait to get this on there. Let's get some on the stick here. I've already been stirring it up a little bit. We don't have anything stuck to the bottom. That's always good. Man, look at that. That is beautiful. I can't wait to see that against that white. I think it's going to be so great. This is factory colors for anybody that didn't know already. Now the paint's going to be a little bit different than the sealer. The sealer was a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. One part sealer, one part catalyst. Uh, this paint's a little different. It's four parts to one so this will be four parts paint one part catalyst and just like the sealer you can add a splash of reducer at the end and that just kind of helps it flow out of the gun a little bit better we mentioned that earlier kind of helps it lay down become a little less orange peely as they call it but that's it four to one is the mixing ratio so remember before for those of you who don't know we did one to one that was the column here all we got to do is go on down to the four to one column We'll go four parts color, we'll go over to the next section, go all the way up, you know, just the, that little bit there, and that'll be your catalyst. And then one little tiny splash at the end of the reducer, if you want, it's optional. And that's it, that's how the color gets mixed. Pretty easy. All right, so paint's in the gun, everything's mixed up. I've gone over this whole thing with the tack cloth twice. I mean, I really went in and kind of blew a little air on it and uh, tacked it at the same time. It ought to be good to go. And uh, this first coat is gonna be kind of like a tack coat, is what they call a tack coat. It's just gonna be kind of a light mist and that'll just kind of make everything nice and sticky for this next coat to stick to. I don't wanna take any chances with this metallic. I don't wanna get any runs, any kind of weird splotchiness or anything. So we're gonna be real careful with this. Uh, when it came to the white, not too much to worry about. You can kind of just hammer it on and go. But when it comes to this metallic, especially blue, uh, it's kind of unforgiving and you want to be sure to put it on good. You don't want it to be, you know, any, too heavy, too light, runs, any of that for sure. All right, so I got my gun set at about 25 PSI. We're going to do about a 50% overlap. And like I said, we're just going to kind of cruise through here really quickly. Just get this kind of attack coat going. That's about what you want it to look like when you're done. We'll let that get nice and sticky, and then we'll come back and do another coat after that. And the next coat will be kind of a medium coat. We'll talk about that in a minute. For now, I gotta get the rest of all of this to look like that.
All right, y'all, so there's the first coat. You can see what I'm talking about? I can kind of see through it. It's just kind of just kind of fogged on there really lightly. See real good on the quarter here. That's all you want on that first coat. Uh, that's just a safety precaution to make sure that the next coat has something to hang on to because the next coat's going to go on much heavier, or in, kind of heavier, not much heavier. The next coat will be like a medium wet coat. And on that coat, we're going to go for coverage. So when we're done with it, we won't actually be, be able to actually see through it anymore. And that's what we're going to do right now. I've already got the, the paint in the gun ready to go. Let's just hammer it on there. All right, so now that we've let the uh, overspray calm down just a little bit, here we go. Let's take a look at that second coat. I think she's looking pretty good. Check it out. So what we got to do now is we're going to put a third coat on, and it'll be about the same thing, kind of a medium wet coat, and then we'll have to do what's called, uh, there's several names for it. It's called a drop coat, a mist coat, control coat, whatever you want to call it, and it's kind of where you just turn your pressure up and just fog it on there really good and all what that does it kind of evens up all of your metallics and things like that and uh, we'll do that at the very end uh, i do want to put one more coat on it that'll make three coats total so far there's two on it now we're gonna put one more nice medium wet coat just to make sure we're all covered up real nice make sure she's got enough protection for years to come right all right so we got the paint and the gun we're going to get our third coat on right now Okay, so now that we got all three coats laid down, all I want to do is do what's known as a drop coat. I'm going to turn my pressure up just a little bit, and we're just going to kind of just fog it on there, really. And what you're doing is you're just evening up all those metallics in case they're kind of, you know, don't look real even. They might look a little heavy here or a little light there, whatever. That will even it up. So that's all that's for. And that's it. She's painted at this point. I'm going to let it dry for a little while. And then I'm going to start peeling some tape because I want to see what it looks like against that white. That's what we've all been waiting for, right? 
This is where it all comes together, everybody. This is what we've been waiting for all this time. Really cool. That's awesome. That's what we've been waiting for right there. Look at that. That's what I was talking about, how it just kind of wraps just right into, just right inside the uh, door jam here. The white color just kind of wraps around in there and it's just split right here where the two panels, one lays on top of the other here. Makes a perfect spot to split your colors and that's what the factory did. And so we went back with, with exactly what they did and man, seeing it all fresh, new like this is just awesome. I mean, look at this. This makes all that hard work worth it. Look at that, oh, that looks so good. That looks so, hey, what? What is this guy doing here? Get out of here. A little bug hiding under there. I'm glad that part was already dry, but look at this. Not gonna lie, this spot here kind of had me worried because I noticed my tape had kind of come unstuck there, but I noticed it in the sealer stage and I caught it and I was able to, to get it to go back. Hopefully it stayed stuck. There we go, yeah, I mean, that looks nice. And don't forget, I mean, a big old piece of trim goes over this. So, I mean, even if it did bleed through or, or was a little weird, it would probably cover anyway, but we still want it to look nice. I mean, that's, that's cool, peeling that tape off like that and seeing them two colors coming together, man. That is just awesome. And then again, like, I, like before, it just kind of wraps itself up into the jam there. And then that's what it looks like. The door's the same way. It kind of goes just around just inside. This here's the driver's side front door. Let's see how it turned out. Get this off of here. There we go. See what I'm talking about, how the two-tone wraps around just inside of the uh, each door each panel, whether it's the fender or what. Fenders, doors, quarters, whatever, it all, all that two-tone goes, wraps around inside the panel. Just makes it a little extra nice, and then of course there we go with the rest of it. So yeah, man, I'm digging it, how about you? Boy, this guy here was a lot of work. That's 50 louvers in that, that little piece there that goes up on the cowling, up by the hood. Um, each one of that, that all had to be stripped down to bare metal. I got a lot of it with the wire wheel, but the wire wheel would only go so far. So we had to get in there and hand sand each one of those louvers down to the bare metal. A lot of work, but totally worth it. It shouldn't have any trouble with it peeling or anything like that. So, no DIY paint job that's been pa basically painted out in a barn. I mean, we're not in a paint booth or anything like that, unfortunately. They're going to come with their share of mishaps, and there's one right there. Can you guys see that? Yep. My gun dripped a little bit of moisture right out of the air chuck, right onto the fender, right there. The first thing you see when you walk up to the car. Gotta love it, right? So, obviously, we got to do a little bit of color sanding and buffing, things like that. Not a big deal. It's all part of the game. That stuff should rub right on out of there and then we could just buff right over it and you never know it was ever there. So that's the plan anyway. Lots of stuff like that still to go on this project and obviously lots of uh, putting it back together. Good Lord, we got a lot of that to do. Well, all right, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. This video has gotta be long by now. Uh, this is where we're at. Be sure to tune in next time and uh, we'll probably be putting it back together get it outside so you guys can get a real good look at it. That'd be awesome. We got miles of trim, things like that that's gotta go back on. Lots of work, I mean, it. we got a ton of work left to go, but look at where we're at, man. This is really cool. Things are starting to come together. That's really awesome. You guys, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I appreciate everybody watching. Check out my Instagram, link in the description, Facebook, Weird Beard on Facebook, all that. I appreciate all the support. And like I said, man, when we get to the end of this whole deal, I'm going to give shout outs to everybody that's donated supplies and, and things like that. Very, very much appreciated. I can't even believe how much stuff you guys have been sending. It's really great. But for now, we are out of here. I'll see you guys next time. Man, that's fun peeling that tape off there.